What is going on everybody? Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to discuss basic nitro tuning and understanding the nitro engine. So one thing I will say, if you guys want your truck to do this, you gotta make sure that you do this. Braking procedures are a must. Um, if you're unsure, you can always look on YouTube for different people's braking procedures, or you can follow the manufacturer of the engine. Um, everyone has a different braking procedure. As long as you follow a braking procedure, you won't have a problem, and you'll have a very healthy running engine for a long time to come. Now, some of the most basic things that you are going to want to do is that out of the box, whether you get a truggy, a monster truck, two wheel drive or four wheel drive, a buggy, a sedan, it doesn't matter. The basic fundamental principles of a nitro engine apply are the same. Out of the box, the engine is going to be set from the manufacturer to its certain tolerances to where it wants to be. Um, if you are unsure, you can always double check those measurements to make sure they're accurate, but 90% of the time, they are accurate on every engine I've ever checked. The only engine I ever had an issue in the almost 18 years I've been running nitros is when I first bought my Losi Double XL Nitro Edition. I bought an engine separately to go into my Aftershock. Um, Long story short, the manufacturer on the package said it was supposed to be two and a half turns out on the high side and two and a half on the low. As soon as I started the engine, I realized something wasn't wrong. Something was wrong because it was running very lean. After researching, I found out it was a problem that was issued by Losi. It was supposed to be four and a quarter turns out on the high and four on the low. Other than that, I've never had an issue with an engine coming to the wrong setting. So with that said, let's get this show started. Now, when you start your engine for the very first time, you will notice a very large amount of smoke being dumped from the exhaust. That is a good sign. Now, after you run your braking procedure, which could be up to as many as 15 tanks per the manufacturer, I normally do at least 10 to 11 tanks before I start changing the mixture. But again, changing the mixture is only dependent on how the engine is sounding. Because as you continue your braking and the tolerances start to loosen up inside the engine, you are going to have a much healthier running engine. Another question that is asked a lot is what are the current settings of your engines? And that, in my, I can say this honestly, that question is irrelevant because what works for me might not work for other people. Bear in mind, elevation, temperature changes, the type of fuel that you're running, all that is going to take an effect on how your engine's running. So let's just say, theoretically, my current carb settings are four and eight turns out that might not be a good setting for you. It might put you in a ballpark, but again, it's all dependent on what type of fuel. Fuel is also another big factor. I myself will run a different fuel for break-in than when I run after when I'm done. This engine is currently running on Byron's 
3011 fuel. That is 30% nitro and 11% oil. The fuel that I break my engines in on and have broken my engines in on for the past eight years or so has been Traxxas Top Fuel. The reason why I like Traxxas Top Fuel is it has a very high oil content. It keeps things nice and lubricated and it actually keeps the temperatures of the engine up, which is what you want during a break-in process. So, as I was saying, once you get your engine fully broken in, all nitro engines are going to have three features. They are going to have a high, so a high speed needle, which is always the needle that the fuel line is connected to. This is your high side needle. This is going to produce 90% of your engine tuning is going to be this high speed needle right here. Below the high speed needle, I don't know if I can even get it on camera because it's a little dark. I can't even get it on camera. It is. Sorry about the shakiness, guys. Below the high speed needle, right under the fuel line trying to balance it and hold it and hang on right under I'm gonna see if I can point to it with the screwdriver right here this is your idle screw this is very very crucial for setting your air gap on your carburetor if your air gap is off everything is gonna be off your Basic air gap is you want half a millimeter to a millimeter of clearance or realistically about the thickness of your standard paper clip is about what you want the gap to set. On the other side, right here, this is your low speed needle. Now, the low speed needle does not work the same way as a low speed needle, say on a gasoline engine. It does not work the same way. Primarily the way I tune my low speed needles is once I have my air gap set to where I want it to be, you could actually, you could use your low speed needle to adjust your idle if you wanted to, if you felt you were too lean or too rich on your bottom end. A good rule of thumb to test if you are too lean or too rich on your bottom end is to grab your fuel line with the engine running and pinch this fuel line off. What you are looking for is realistically this engine should run for roughly three seconds, not counting one, two, three, but counting one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Once you get to that point, the RPMs of the engine should gradually rise up a little bit and the engine should stall right out. If you can get to three seconds, that's what I've always based my engines on. If you can get your engine to do that and it's doing that efficiently, well, leave your low side alone. Don't touch it. Now, after you've broken in your engine, you might want to lean your engine out a little bit. If you choose to lean it out, I mean, when I say a little, I mean literally barely move your needle. A small adjustment can make a huge difference. Now, when you put a pipe on a vehicle, you might want to think, oh, I'm going to lean it out to get more power. Generally speaking, when you put on a pipe, you're probably going to end up riching it up a little bit because when you put a pipe on, you're actually introducing more air to the vehicle. It can now pull more air in. It needs more fuel to compensate that. So generally speaking, you will do the opposite to get more power. You will richen it up. Um, now... The fundamental way, the way a, a glow engine works or a nitro engine works, 
is you have glow plugs. Now, if you don't understand how they work, realistically, you take a glow igniter, you stick it on, it heats the element up, it, heat, it heats the little filament up in the end, on the glow plug, that little filament turns red hot, and that helps ignite the nitro fuel. What some of you may know or may not know is that what happens after, sorry, my light just went out, <clears throat> after your engine starts from the initial test, basically there is a reaction. There's a reaction with the fuel. Sorry, I'm rambling here because my light turned off. <laughs> There's a reaction with the methane in the fuel. The methanol in the fuel reacts with the platinum in the glow plug, and that that reaction actually keeps the glow plug hot. It's a chemical reaction that physically heats up this little element in the glow plug. So if you've ever started a nitro engine and it fired up, but then the second you pull your glow igniter off the engine and it dies out, well, there you go. The problem is with your glow plug. So when your engine's running, it is also still relying on the glow plug to keep that thing, to keep the engine running. Another issue, the way these engines run, is you have one fuel inlet, and then you have a pressure line coming from your exhaust, which pressurizes your fuel tank. This pressurization actually forces the nitro fuel down the tank into the line and into the carburetor. If you have a leak at your, your, your tank or your lid, you're not going to get a good seal and you're not going to get a good, flow of a good flow of nitro fuel and that's also going to cause your engine to run lean. So another thing is the choices of fuel that you run. If you run in a, in a, a fuel that has a very high oil content, that could actually give you a very false reading when you go to tune your engine. You could physically go to tune your engine and what's going to happen is you're going to start leaning it out, leaning it out to try to get the, RPR, the upper RPMs to come up. And by the time you realized your mistake, you're going to get that engine so hot from depriving it of fuel and oil, you're just going to burn your you're going to burn your engine out. So if you're looking for better performance out of your engine, change to a better fuel with a lower oil content after you broke in your engine. The same exact principle goes for monster trucks. It doesn't even on this old school Savage 25, the principles are the same. It, it doesn't matter if it's a newer or an older. The principle of the nitro engine is the same. The same concept happens. So what you want to look for is when the engine is running, you want a nice even trail of smoke exiting the exhaust. You want to very carefully listen to your exhaust pitch. Um, Sound is everything in a nitro. To some people, tuning a nitro engine becomes very natural and very second nature. Um, before I got the low C8 again, it was, I was out of the nitro field for two years. The second I got this, it all came back to me in a flash and I instantly picked up where I left off and it's like I never left nitro. So to some people, um, tuning nitros is just something that's, they, they love very much and other people have problem tuning nitros and that that's not something to be ashamed about um tuning nitro engines can be very finicky it can be a very difficult thing because you have to make such small adjustments a lot of people where people go wrong is they over adjust they over move their high speed needle and they really start to throw things off um but with that said um I hope this kind of gives you a basic insight of to nitro tuning and, and how it could help in the future. So with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay tuned for future videos. And also, 
Guys, I want you to go and check out uh, Foundry RC um, on YouTube. He actually just released a video of us bashing in Connecticut. Um, the Daddy Daughter team of New Jersey had already had their video up, but Foundry RC has just uploaded a video. Go check him out. Uh, his name is Gary. Great guy. Makes great videos. Um, awesome time. Show him some love and see his videos. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. All right, guys. I will catch you in the next video. Till then. Later, guys.